Hello, Oracles. Ooh, what a day today for Tesla stock up nearly 6% on the day. Tesla is up almost 5% on the day. So today was great, especially after the massive pullback we saw yesterday. But if we noticed yesterday, we did get the massive pullback in the market, but Tesla held up strong at that 245 level. That there gave us the indication that we were going to be pushing up today. Sure enough, we did. Now, we did have a big level today that we wanted to stay above. That was $260. We did end up closing above that. That now gives us indication that we could be moving up significantly more. So we will get into all of the details, what we could possibly see in the future in just a minute. All right, so looking at the charts today, again, nice finish, 261.16, pulling back a little bit after hours, not too concerned about that. Huge big green candlestick today with some good volume coming in at 129 million shares trading hands. We did get a little bit of a partial gap filled today on that 262 level, not fully filled, still have a little bit to go, but chances are we're going to push up and fill that tomorrow. Now we push up and fill that tomorrow and we could maintain this upward trend pushing closer towards filling this 289 gap. Will we get to $300 prior to earnings? We will just have to wait and see. Do we have room to get there? We sure do. RSI is at 55 right in the middle. Plenty of room to push up towards 300 if the stock wants to go that direction. So looking at what we have coming up, which could be catalysts to move us higher or lower, not a lot going in the macro environment. You know, we had the whole entire debacle yesterday going on with Kevin McCarthy getting voted out as Speaker of the House. That, along with higher Treasury yields, ended up selling the stock market off significantly. Today, we saw the stock market reverse. So obviously, whatever was going on with the House didn't play that much of a role into the stock market itself, and the Treasury yields started to come down. So that there allowed the stock market to bloom a little bit. So now we just have to pay attention to what's going forward. Who knows what's going to happen in that aspect, but when you start looking at Tesla specifically, we don't really have much of anything fundamentally wise going on between now and earnings when it comes to what the actual numbers are. Typically, we don't hear much information on that, but what we do have coming up is the Cybertruck event. So now the Cybertruck event has not officially been announced yet, but I've got some information stating that it's going to be coming potentially at the end of this month. No announcements on it yet. We will just have to wait and see if that is actually going to play out. But chances are, if we don't hear about it before earnings, we will hear about it at earnings, and then we will see what's going on with the event there. So looking at what we have for catalysts between the between earnings and if earnings end up going well and we can continue this momentum going through earnings, then we get the Cybertruck event announcement. That could continue us into a very strong October and then potentially finish the quarter off extremely strong as well. Again, we are still in an environment that's not really open to just a straight bull run. We still need to take things day at a time. But looking at what we have for the catalysts, we visualize right now a potentially very strong October and we'll just see how it goes from there. And now shifting over to Tesla. So Gort and I were talking today about this, and this is something that we've noticed is these swings up and down. The swings with this stock end up going with the fear and greed index. We hit extreme fear yesterday at 16, the lowest numbers we have seen since 2020 and the pandemic. So right now we are starting to recover and claw our way back out of that. And of course, the stock is reflecting that. We are pulling out with Tesla here. Tesla up almost 5% on the day to 1432. And this has been tracking nicely with Tesla. It held up strong yesterday when the entire market pulled back and it bounced off of that and started coming back up again. And what's nice about Tesla is we have noticed that it's been pretty range bound between 13 and $18. If this trend ends up continuing, that would mean that buying at that lower end, anywhere below $14, is going to get you not only those nice dividends, but you're also going to get the gains. I know some of the concerns that people have are, well, you're going to be losing your net asset value with the stock. So when you end up getting your dividend payouts, you're not actually making any money. You're just breaking even or maybe even losing money on the deal. So those high dividends don't really make a difference. What it's going to come down to is what is your cost basis? If you continue to drip in, you will end up getting a lower cost basis as well. 
my strategy right now, as we've been monitoring this is I'm going to be getting myself under $15. I'm at 1505 for a cost basis right now. That's right in the middle of that range. I want to get that down as low as possible. So this next time around tomorrow, we are going to be getting the declaration date. That's when we find out what the payments are going to be. Friday is going to be the X date. On Friday, that is the date I am going to be adding more shares to it because whatever the payment is, we're going to be dropping that amount. As of right now, my prediction is 63 cents per share. Again, we'll find out tomorrow what that is. But if it is 63 cents, that means that the stock price on Friday will drop that 63 cents. If we anticipate Tesla is going to continue running up for this month, buying on Friday would be a good time to buy. That's going to get a lower cost basis and then it will rebound from there. Then you're going to get paid out on the 16th for that dividend. So my thought on this is, am I going to drip in or not? I'm going to see where we're at at the time when we get to the 16th. If at the 16th we're over $15, I might only drip half of it in and then take the other half and put it into something else. And then I will just monitor from there. For me, I plan on hitting my goal of Tesla by the end of this month. So I'm going to start figuring out from there where I want to drip. If we're up near the $17, $18 range, I might not drip anything at all. As we pull back down under $15, I will begin dripping more back in to lower my cost basis down. Again, that is assuming we are still going to be following this pattern between that $13 and $18 range. Still things that have to play out need to pay attention to this, but as we go up in price, that yield will end up going up as well. If we continue this trajectory where we're at and we close over 15 or even close to $16 at the end of this month, we could be looking at a payout next month of near 80 cents per share where we might be seeing 63 cents per share this time around. This is why it's important to just kind of pay attention to those trends. Again, if you are buying in at the lower end and you get that payout, you're going to get the gains and a nice payout, especially as the stock moves up. You're going to have more shares because you bought them lower. Then you're going to get that higher payout at a higher level with more shares. Then if you want to swing trade it, some people may sell out at that higher level as well, make those profits, get those dividends. As it comes back down, put the money back in. Again, nobody knows if this trend is going to end up continuing, but that's what we have seen all year long. And it seems like we're starting to trend back in that direction. So Again, not financial advice, just the patterns that I have seen going on and how I am going to be playing this. And so jumping back over to Tesla itself, since Tesla does trade off of Tesla itself, Sawyer Mara posting out, News, Rivian today announced its intention to offer $1.5 billion in convertible senior notes. Rivian stock is down 7% after hours on the news. So now this is something that's totally normal for an up and coming company. These startups do need funding. So they go out there and they raise whatever capital they can to keep their business moving forward. This is nothing unusual. Anybody who knows the story of how Tesla began, we know that Elon went out there and he was asking for investors to come in and he needed funding for Tesla to get itself off the ground. That's what we see normally. Normally we see companies out there trying to get funding and investors to come in to get money. Rivian, a publicly traded company, goes out there and offers convertible notes so that they can get that funding to come in and keep moving the company forward. It does give a hit to the company's stock price because they're diluting all of their shares. However, over time, if the company does continue to grow, that will wash itself out. So totally normal, totally okay. And I am a fan of Rivian. I'm a fan of all of the EV makers that are out there right now. This is totally normal, but just shows the challenges that a lot of these other companies are facing especially when it's during difficult macroeconomic times, this could be even more difficult for these companies. And if they cannot raise that funding, that could be very detrimental to their business. And now a little update on the Ford F-150 Lightning. Sawyer Merritt posts out, I made a chart of Ford's F-150 Lightning EV sales by quarter. Ford said the recent cancellations are due to them switching over to the 2024 model year, but the trend isn't great. Q3 2023 sales were down about 46% year over year. With the Cybertruck coming out soon, things aren't going to get easier for them. And so just looking at the trend that they're on, you know, up and then down, 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 and they just keep on coming down after that. Now, one thing to remember as well, legacy automotive makers have model year vehicles that they put out. Tesla doesn't really do that. They constantly make updates to the vehicle on a regular basis. And then just like we saw with the Model 3 switching over to the Highland, every once in a while, Tesla realizes 
you know, we need to do a full revamp on the vehicle. Now we do end up seeing that from Legacy Auto as well, but when it comes to Legacy Auto, it could take them upwards of a decade to get everything in the works to make those full changes happen. Tesla does it over the course of a few years. Thinking about the fact that the Model 3 was just released in 2018, here we are five years later getting a full revamp on the vehicle already, and that doesn't even include all of the updates we saw along the way between then and now. And then don't forget that when it comes to these vehicles, it's software updates that you can get regularly. So even if you get a vehicle right now, it can still be upgraded over time because of the software no different than your phones. And sure, Legacy Auto is going to be able to do that as well with their vehicles, but they still have that old school legacy mindset of, we need to change over the model year of the vehicle and move forward with that versus just making it a seamless moving forward change and saying, hey, we saw some updates that need to change. We're gonna change it on the line, move it forward. Don't need to change out those model years. That's just a lot of unnecessary effort going in on a regular basis to update vehicles that maybe don't even need to be updated because they can do it on the fly with software. And so going back to the stock price itself, we have a lot of room to run. Again, we are just now pulling out of extreme fear levels, moving up from there. So there's a lot of room to grow there. We have room to grow in the RSI. We have charts that are pointing to positivity. We have a macro environment and Tesla specific environment that have more positive catalysts behind it as well. Lots of room to move up. Now we are also looking at jobs report data. That coming in on Friday is going to be extremely important. One of the most important things the Fed is paying attention to is the jobs report and what we are looking at there. Because if people continue to go out there and they're getting jobs and there's a lot of jobs that are offered and people's wages are going up, that could continue to push inflation back up. We did see a bounce, came up a little bit the last couple of months. Not too concerning, but just something to pay attention to. So if we do see that jobs market softening, as the Fed wants to see, that would give us the indication that we may see inflation coming down as well. Less people working, less money out in the market to be spent, less demand. That just naturally means with less demand that prices would come down. That's just the laws of supply and demand. So how that's going to play out, we will have to wait and see. So again, Friday, we get that jobs report and we'll see how the market reacts from there. And now on Friday, don't forget, that's going to be the day that we are going to be getting the X date for TSLY. So if we end up getting a sort of scare from the jobs report and a pullback, that will end up doubling on top of TSLY because of the fact that we'll have the payment amount dropping the stock price at that time. So could be a good buying opportunity on Friday for Tesla, double wise because of the potential jobs report. So, but again, if the jobs report comes in hotter than expected and we pull down, maybe we just have to wait for it to pull down further. Don't really know, but those are just the scenarios that can play out and the different things that I put in my head. When it comes to my own investing, I don't make decisions and say, this is what I am going to do. The way I look at things is I always ask questions and play out the multiple scenarios in my head. So it's usually three different ways. If we get a hotter than expected jobs report, Maybe I just kind of hold off. Maybe I don't buy extra of anything because that might scare the market. If we get a softer jobs report, hey, probably a great buying opportunity because that might indicate that the Fed is not going to be raising rates anymore this year, might be officially a pause, and we could be good from there and the market can run more. If we get a meets expectation number, I just roll as is and continue my dollar cost average as I'm doing. So I just play out all the different scenarios in my head, ask all of these questions to myself, and then kind of adjust from there. That's the way I am with being an agile investor. And that's what I've suggested to you guys and what you do. And just be ready for whatever the market gives you. Nobody knows what tomorrow is going to bring. But if we prepare ourselves for whatever else we think could be coming out there, then whatever happens, we just react to that accordingly. So that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of your support. Have a great one.